It is finally starting to get warmer here and with spring on its way, I redid my balcony recently and these gorgeous flowers bring me hope and fills my studio with inspiration when it comes to painting. Also really quick before we start, I want to thank all 500 plus of you who have subscribed to my little YouTube channel. I'm only two months in and so very grateful if you watch my videos and find them useful. I started this channel hoping to inspire others to just paint and find comfort in painting almost like therapy. Nothing makes me happy when I see other people's recreation of my work through um, tagging me on Instagram, Facebook, or even my email. So thank you so, so very much. Truly means a lot. Today, I will be showing you how to paint beautiful and very simple roses. I have this gorgeous vase of roses right in front of me in my studio at all times. So I will be using that as reference. To me, roses are timeless and so perfect in so many ways that I am super excited to be painting this with y'all today. Okay, so before we start, like always, let's establish a simple sketch of a rose down so that, you know, you have some sort of structure when you paint. So in every rose, you will have this like central bud that kind of looks like an eye and then every petal that comes out of it is connected to one another. You can have as many layers as you would like, but if you are new to roses, then I would suggest sticking with only a few. Some petals have really unique and different shapes, but for the purpose of this video, we will be painting and focusing on a very simple basic rose. I will be using my Princeton number no. 4 and 6 to paint these roses and my Koi watercolor set. Again, everything will be listed in the description um, down below. So keeping that sketch handy, let's lay down the center part that resembles an eye to me, which will be a darkest. As I move out, my brush strokes will get larger and lighter in color. By using the belly of the brush, you can press down gently to cover more space to make them larger. I like to keep my roses light and watery to give them that loose, dreamy effect. So remember your center will be your darkest and rich in color and will soften up as you work along the outside. So as you can see, you keep going around and around until you find a good stopping point. But you know, it is actually very common to not know when to stop, mainly because it is so fun and you can really get into it. But you know, just look at the shape overall and you will naturally know when is a good point to stop. So yeah, don't overdo it. And do not aim for a perfect symmetry, even though that is really hard. Um, but take a step back every now and then and just, you know, see where you can add a petal or two. If you have a reference photo or roses lying around your home that you can look at, that would be best and recommended actually, so that you can make these as organic as possible. I am just adding a little more paint to the edges of a few of these to add more definition. Even after they are semi-dry, you can keep coming back to it if needed. Okay, now that we have our first rose, let's move on to the second one. And I will uh, be using orange and peaches this time. So again, after you get down that strange looking eye shape thing in the middle, you can then do the exact same thing as before and apply more pressure to your brush to get larger brush strokes. Remember to keep them light as well as you work your way outside. Oh, also I forgot to mention an important step earlier. Um, so as you can see, I do leave some white negative space in between each layer intersection. This helps separate the shapes and also adds a bit more definition to uh, the overall um, shape of the rose. I 
I love the combination of peach and orange. I think it gives it such a nice soft effect. Using a tiny bit of reddish brown color to intensify the middle section here. I'm coming back to my pink rose here and adding a slight pop to it. This is optional, but if you would like your rose to have more definition, this can be a good step. No flower is complete without some leaves around it. It really does bring out the best of the flowers so much more. So using an olive green color here, I am just randomly placing a few leaves here and there. Again, very basic, very simple shapes. Play with a variety of sizes to add more interest. I am planning on making a separate video on leaves by itself, so if you feel like you struggle with that a bit, just stay tuned and hopefully that will help. Painting roses may seem difficult at first, but once you get the hang of it by practicing, it will seriously become your favorite flower to paint ever. I am obsessed with them and go back to these beauties in my spare time. Let me know in the comments below what flowers are your favorite to paint and if you would like a video on a specific flower, I would be happy to make that for you. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, once again, thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will catch you next week. Bye, guys.